Today I'm on my way to North London to do something that's really important to me. The rescue charity All Dogs Matter have asked me to come and visit their kennels to check out some new arrivals. Waiting at All Dogs Matter is Ira, who founded the rescue charity. Hey, Ira, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, you too. Big day. Like jump suit. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm kitted out, ready to go for a, a very big day. I yeah, hope our yeah. Korean yeah. dogs very have travelled well to the UK. Yeah, it was very exciting, just waiting for them to arrive. Kennels have been especially prepared for 12 very special rescue cases that are arriving all the way from South Korea. So the dogs arriving today have been rescued from a meat farm. They are dogs that are either bred for their meat or they're often stolen or they're ex-pets that have been picked up. They're kept on these farms, fattened up, and then once a year there's the Yulin meat festivals when these dogs are basically tortured and killed and it's horrendous. They're like death camps, really. The Korean government and lots of, you know, young Koreans are obviously anti this now. They're working at closing most of these farms down and rescuing and taking out most of these dogs. Dogs are complex, emotional, sentient beings. So they understand what's going on around them. So the thought that these poor animals live a life where they're unloved and when it comes to their final moments, they see what's going to happen to them. It's just, it, it just, you can't, you just can't bear thinking about it. It's awful. These will be the first Korean meat trade dogs to arrive in the UK after being rescued by the charity Humane Society International. So we're looking quite shy, a little bit traumatised. Hello. London-based All Dogs Matter has been entrusted with finding the new homes. To be able to make just even the slightest bit of difference in have a connection that makes them think, you know what, maybe people aren't horrendous, which they must think right now. Hello, buddy. Welcome to Britain. And I hope that these dogs might finally see a good side to people. It's just awful to think this is the first time he's been shown true affection, isn't it? Well, absolutely. I and mean, the trust that they give, considering how they're treated, is just, well, I think maybe we can learn some lessons from them. Well, let's get you somewhere nice and warm, shall we? We've got a lovely bed set up for you. My job today is to examine them all, make sure that they have survived the journey okay, and they're given their first set of vaccinations. Each dog is taking to its environment differently. While some seem relaxed, others are a lot more fearful. She won't bite. <laughs> Poor Lulu, she's obviously seen a hell of a lot. She's one of the most nervous. Uh, she's petrified. She won't make any eye contact, won't look at you. She just doesn't want to see anything of the world. I mean, just just wonder what she's seen in her little life. Up it's to so now. upsetting to see, isn't it? It's really it's more upsetting now I've met them. It's really got to you, hasn't it? Yeah. Now I've met them. Yeah. It's very clear the damage that has been done by these dogs being in the environments that they've been in back in Korea. These dogs have had no upbringing, no socialization, no training, no fun, no joy. And as a result, they just have nothing to give. She's completely broken down. She's just frozen. Lulu is clearly severely traumatized. What's going to be the hard part is teaching this beautiful dog to be a dog again. We do need to take a different approach when trying to examine dogs like this because you simply have no history. And if anything, you know that they're from pretty bad beginnings. So they're going to be nervous. Some of them fearful, some of them aggressive as a result of being fearful. So it is a case of just gently moving forward, doing the best for them, but trying to appreciate the traumas they've been through. A little feeling of what freedom feels mm. like, and sweetie. She's Abby is the first dog Scott will be treating. The funny thing about dealing with Abby is just she's actually quite friendly. Yes, she's timid and she's nervous and she's shy, but she's not aggressive. And you think, you know what, after what they've been through, if they were trying to bite my face off, I'd understand it. But yet she's still got room in her heart for affection, which is just so desperately sweet. <laughs> A little bit unsure of noises. Well, I suppose in her past, those sorts of noises could have meant death. Oh. To think they might have actually seen... Being grabbed out yeah. of the cage. We're sitting here now. So yeah. Come in and grab her out. And so kill her kill right her in front of the... Oh, just, it's not worth thinking about. 
Yeah. But sadly, it's a reality and it's happening. Yeah. We just need to stop it happening. Yeah. And for this little girl, she just needs to learn that she can be safe and confident here and no one's going to do that to you. It is a real privilege today to be the vet for these dogs. OK, Abby, so you're going to be a brave girl. The first vet in the UK to examine them, give them a vaccination and then help them on their way. Hey, that's the first step to your forever home. Yes. I was really gearing myself up for a really difficult job today. So a little mocker here is behaving a little bit more like what you'd expect from I a think meat so, dog. Yeah. A Nervous bit more aggressive and, and a little bit of an aggression, yeah, yeah. So I think we're going to have to be careful here. Getting into the cage with Mocha and Jane, you can see that this dog is just quite fearful, quite nervous, and also a little bit reactive. And it's those dogs you can't read very well, and sometimes they go from fearful to aggressive. All right. Not stupid. You know exactly what this is, don't you? I mean, he's acting just like you'd expect a dog from a meat farm to behave. He's like, all people are scum, yeah. and I don't trust one single one of you. Understandably, that type of rope would have been the kind of thing that would have been put around other dogs that he would have seen back in Korea and would have been dragged out to their deaths. So clearly he's going to be worried about that. Good boy. Now, we're really sorry about that. Good okay. boy. We're not trying to do anything mean to you. No, we're not. No, we're not. So I'm just checking the fact that Mokka is definitely a boy. And? He is, but he's got a bit of an issue in that he only has one descended testicle. OK. So he's a crypt orchid. So the other one, I can't feel it in the inguinal canal, so it means that that testicle is likely in, still in his abdomen. So okay. when he gets neutered, we'll have to go fishing in there to try and find, and find it. it. And remove it. Good boy. Although I've picked up a condition in Mocha that does need surgery, I just don't feel that his emotional state is strong enough for him to leave the supportive environment of the kennels. So I think it's best I leave him here in the caring and loving arms of Jane, but I will be coming back to pick him up soon. Let's see, we didn't even need the muzzle. Hey? No, we didn't. No. Right, so who's next? Most of the new arrivals are Jindos, originally bred in South Korea for hunting. So the next the patient others. kennel manager Jane introduces Hello. to Scott... Hello, Jack. ..stands out. Hello. Hello, mate. Wow. Well, that's a very friendly hello, isn't it? Good boy. Should we go in and have a look at Yeah, here? please. Hi, Jack. Jack is a very sweet little beagle cross. He's very chilled, very happy, very waggy tail dog. He's clearly an ex-pet dog that unfortunately got caught up in the dog meat trade. So I had noticed with his left eye. Yes. I'd like you to have a look at that, please. Yeah, I can see. So he's got a cherry eye, an enlargement of the gland that hides in the third eyelid. It's prolapsed out, becomes more irritated, gets larger, stays out. So it's probably very likely that Jack has had that his whole life and something I can easily fix with a little bit of surgery, can't I? Brilliant. Yeah, but I can see also at the same time he's probably... Are you an entire male? <laughs> yes. Sorry to do that straight away. A bit rude, isn't it? Hey? So, we need to new to you. We need to sort your eye out. And then we can find you a lovely new home. But he is not going to have any trouble, I don't think so. I think he'll be straight out. Yeah. Jack's a really happy boy and far less traumatised than some of the others. All right, good boy, brave boy. So I think he's the perfect candidate for me to take back to the practice to give him all the procedures that he needs so he's ready for his forever home. That's my good brave girl. Good Before good Scott girl. heads back to Richmond with Jack, there's one last rescue dog to look at. Lily just has no spark in her at all. There's no energy, there's not even any fight. I can hear a heart, now we just need to fill it with some love, don't we? Yes. Okay, good girl. So now I need to vaccinate you. I'm so sorry. Doesn't know what it's like to be a dog, doesn't know what it's like to enjoy life, to be outside, to be loved, to be cared for, to be trained, to be fed. Do you feel like you need to cuddle her for years and years to make up for everything that's uh, been done to her, everything she's seen? Mm, we're sorry. Mm, it's going to get better. Yeah, well. It's been an emotional day for everyone. And with all the rescue dogs now vaccinated, Scott is heading back to the practice with Jack for his eye surgery.
Jane, I will take this boy and you can look after the rest. That's great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Come on, big boy. See you soon. Come on. Let's go. Come on. You're keen, aren't you? Come on then, let's go. Good boy. Come on, lad. Can you come? Come on. Come on. Come meet the team. At the Richmond practice, Scott has arrived with Jack. Come on. Hi, ladies. Oh, who's this? Oh, this is Jack. Guess where he's from? I don't know. Local <gasps> charity? Or... Uh, he's, he's not a Richmond boy. The Beagle Cross was one of yeah. the 12 dogs that have yeah. just arrived in he's the UK after being rescued from the meat trade in South Korea. Right. Come on then, let's go. <laughs> Good boy. That's it. Jack needs immediate surgery before the search can begin to find him a new home. Not only do we need to neuter Jack in order for him to find his forever home, but also we need to correct something that he has called cherry eye. Basically, he has a small gland in the third eyelid which has prolapsed. And what I need to do is to encourage it back behind that third eyelid. And I do that by performing a procedure where I almost make a little sleeping bag for it, tuck it back in and that inflammation reduces. I don't think Jack's too impressed by the looks of it. No. <laughs> Assisting Scott awesome? today are nurses Nathan and Reagan. Let's just give him a little pre-med. Be sleepy. Jack is a dog that's been in a dog meat farm and yet is finding solace and clearly joy in the arms of people. So it's quite heartbreaking in a way to think that this boy doesn't have a home, but you know what, he's going to get one quickly. He is adorable. Hey, Hello. Hello, big guy. The fact that he still has love in his heart for people is incredibly humbling and reminds us all just how amazing dogs really are. All the horrible stuff's all done. We can be rehomed. That's right. Yeah. To someone who's going to love you very much. Just what you deserve. At the Isleworth practice. Come on in. Vet nurse Lily is bringing in her pet hamster. Hello. Hi, Lily. Hi. For a pedicure. Hi. This is my hamster, Cricket. Hi, Cricket. Hi. Can I hold her? Yeah. Is it a girl? It is. Has she got enough bedding, do you think? Well, this is her burrow box. It's not actually her full cage. Nurse Gina and vet Phoebe are instantly smitten with the lively little hamster. Hello. She's very cute. Hello. She's very cute. Is she okay though? Is there anything wrong with her? She's fine, but her nails are starting to curl over, so I think they might need a bit of a trim. Okay, we can definitely do that. Oh yeah, I can see what you mean. Yeah. They've got a bit long and they're actually sort of twisting her toes a little bit. A little bit, yeah. I changed Cricket's bedding over quite recently, and ever since then, her nails are not wearing down as they used to, so they're starting to curl over, which can't be very comfortable for her. Right then, let's put her back in and take her through. There you go. Oh, don't, oh. Go, <laughs> don't go hiding. Come on in, let's go get you a manicure. <laughs> I've done nail clips in dogs and cats and rabbits. I've done them in every other possible animal I can think of, just never done them in a hamster before. So I'm a bit concerned that she's going to be really wriggly. And I know that also in hamsters, the stress of something like this can be quite dangerous. Their heart can stop and things like that. Yeah, so she's quite happy being handled yeah. and she does come around the country with me so okay. she's used to stress. But it clearly is something that needs to be done. She's less reluctant to go on her wheel certainly Yeah. but she's still happily climbing all over the bars. Oh well we can't have you not going on your wheel can we? That's what hamsters are meant to do. She might be a bit more settled in your hands. I doubt it, she usually climbs all over me. <laughs> These are the smallest clippers we have. They're still about half the size of her. Yeah. <laughs> right. We'll try our best. Good girl, good girl. There we go. We've got one. We've got one. <laughs> I'm sorry, good girl, good girl. Two. Uh, <laughs> three. I feel like you wouldn't be able to do this with that many hamsters. No. <laughs> right, how's that foot looking? So that's already made a difference to mm. her walking, I can see, with the foot that we have done and the foot that we haven't. Lily, I'm very impressed with Cricket. No, I'm lucky she's so friendly. Yeah. That's why I picked her. She was the only one who came to greet me when I went to pick one out. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Right. Paw number two. Let's carry on. Sorry, Poppin. Cricket's doing really well. She's not squeaking as much as I thought she would, which can be a sign of stress. So hopefully we can get on and cut the rest of her nails quite fast. One more foot. We really need some smaller clippers. 
don't think they do hamster size clippers. No, I'm not sure they do. There we go. Done. I think I got better as we went along. Or maybe <laughs> she just was putting up with it a bit better. There we go. So it's really nice when you can cut hamster's nails like this because it clearly provides instant relief. So we can put her back on the table and her toes are now nicely aligned and I think she's a lot more comfortable. And although she's not looking happier, I can tell that she's happier. <laughs> Do you want a treat for going through that? What's that? Oh, she's doing really good, weren't you? Yeah. How handsome you are. I think you know you're handsome, don't you? And you know you're very cute. At the Richmond practice, Nurse Sam is spending time with Jack, one of the 12 dogs rescued from the South mm -hmm. Korean meat trade. Sam's going to see you today. He might have a new home. It's been just a week since he arrived in the UK to hopefully begin a promising new life. <laughs> today, Jack has some special visitors, Caroline and her son Alex and Bassett Hound Sue. Come on, boy. The family has been following Jack's story and are interested in adoption. We'd been following it on social media, so we'd seen Jack's story before he arrived in the country. Say hello. hello. You're going to have Say a younger hello. brother that looks not dissimilar. No, he doesn't. No, not, not dissimilar. He's very lucky to have been brought over, to have been looked after. So, yeah, hopefully we can now be, be part of that as well. Lovely. He's so wonderful, aren't you? Although Caroline and Alex are keen to adopt Jack, they need to make sure he gets along with nine-year-old Snoopy. 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 What do you think, Snoopy? What do you think? Hey. Well, no reaction is better than an aggressive one, so I'll take that. That's fine. He's quite chilled. Yeah. Well, maybe he's just quite discerning, so he just needs to get to know Jack a little more. Though. You guys go and have a lovely walk in the beautiful green fields of Richmond. I really think that Caroline and Alex's family is going to be a perfect match for our little Jack, but we just want to make sure it's right. Come on, Jack. Come on. So they decide to take Jack for a little walk with Snoopy in the green fields of Richmond. Snoopy's always a little bit aloof. He's nine and a half. He's one of these dignified old gents. He's not quite as excited as Jack, but it all seems good. Very happy. How's it going? Good, really good. Yeah? I think. Going I, very well. They don't want to come back in. I think, I think they Jack, might like each other. It's <laughs> well, brotherly, brotherly love. love. But yeah, brotherly, brotherly love. love. That's what we're having. I think the most important thing is, is that he's happy and it's the best thing for him. I'm really hoping it is. Well, that's it. I think the two big so, pluses that you give Jack is, A, you work from home. Yes. So you are there to be able to give him the long walks that he needs. He's still a young, energetic, exuberant dog. Absolutely, But also, yes. he doesn't tend to be upset when he's with the companionship of another dog. And that's exactly what Snoopy's going to offer. So for us, I think we couldn't think of anyone more perfect to take him to. Well, we're very thankful and very thrilled. It's been a massive privilege to work with these dogs that have been rescued from the dog meat trade, and these are the lucky ones, and Jack particularly, he'll only know love from here on out. Good luck, guys. All the best. Thank you very Bye, much. Bye, Jack. Bye, Snoopy. Look after him for us. Bye. Right. Bye, guys. Bye, bye See you later. Bye, Jack. Bye, Jack. Bye. See ya. Two weeks later, Scott is returning to the rescue charity All Dogs Matter. Hello, guys. Hello. Good lad. He's back to see Mocha, one of the 12 dogs rescued from the South Korean meat trade. Good lad. Mocha has a condition known as cryptorchidism, where one of his testicles is missing from the scrotum. Hello, Jane. Hi, Scott. This is all looking very promising, isn't it? He's getting used to some pampering. Hello, Mocha. Doing really well. Okay. Well, Jane, you've obviously been sprinkling your magic on this guy because he's quite the transformed character, isn't he? Coming on really, really well. It's all right. When Scott first saw Mocha, the little dog was deeply traumatised. I mean, he's acting just like you'd expect. And too stressed to be taken back to the practice for surgery. I'm not trying to do anything mean to you. Scott predicted it would take intensive TLC to help Mocker come out of his shell. So we've been getting used to handling him, grooming him, getting him ready for his forever home. 
Okay, and he's at least accepting it now, isn't it? Rose? Seems so much more relaxed. He was quite a nervous chap. I remember us uh, running around <laughs> trying to get hold of him. Exactly, yeah. Um, so it seems to me that he has developed a little bit more confidence since he arrived from Korea. Do you feel like maybe he's ready now to allow me to take him to the practice? I think that'd be great. I think the trust is there and I think he's good to go. Yeah, and we just need to jump this last hurdle before he can get to his forever home. It's got to happen sometime, my friend. Hey, you ready? I think he's ready. Yeah. Jane's an incredible person. She really is like a dog whisperer. She is so good with them. Good lad, is that nice? You see the way she moves with them and works with them. She really does garner their confidence and clearly that's really worked with Mocha. Now, mate, I'm really sorry to do this, but I um, just want to make sure that what I felt last time in your uh, male areas is the same. All right, so let me just have a little feel. Good boy. So you've got back here. So Good lad. last time I could only feel one testicle in his scrotum and the same applies today, I'm afraid. So there is just the one ball in the bag. Right. So the oh, other one mocha. is likely to be in his abdomen Okay. still. So he would have been born that way. and. He's classed as a dog with cryptorchidism. Okay. And that is a problem long term because that testicle will develop in a warmer environment, being in the abdomen rather than being in the scrotum. And that could mean he's opened up to, well, basically cancer. Okay. So it's better that we just take it out now that we know it's a problem and then he can start in his new life. So that's good that he's ready to go. Yeah. Good boy. Mm -hmm. Good boy. Okay. There we are, Mocha. Right. Off you go. Go, all right. In there. Good boy. In you go. There we go. Good lad. All right. Right. See you soon. See you soon. See Good luck, Mocha. Cuddles? Gizmo, come and have a cuddle with Mum. Another one of Scott's patients will also be heading in to see him later today. No reaction at all. Grumpy Gizmo belongs to Sarah and David. Hello. Gizmo is our Persian cat, which is a rescued cat. And he's approximately 10 years old because being a rescue cat, it's difficult to age them. Lately, the Persian rescue cat has developed a rather embarrassing habit. Gizmo's got sexual preference, like me. So, hey? so, so. <laughs> I'd rephrase that. Yeah, well, how can you rephrase it? All he wants to do is hump my leg or my arm. Gizmo, give it a break. As soon as I come home from work in the evening, sit down and watch a bit of telly, he's on me and tries to hump me stupid. Yeah. Mm. No. No. Pack it up. No. We tried scoring him for it to try and prevent him from doing things like that. And it just makes him worse. Off you go. Come on, just call it a day. You've had enough of this. I'll go and tell your mother. That's it. We were told he was neutered. So really, it shouldn't be going on. Guess what? Stop it. Now. It's got to the stage it is embarrassing. All right, David thinks it's funny. I don't anymore. I don't think he would do it when anyone was here, but I wouldn't want it to happen. Gizmo, stop it. Sarah is so fed up with Gizmo's antics, she's booked him in for an appointment with Scott later today. Pack it up. Beautiful. I'm just going to show you off to the girls. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Oh. Who's this? This very handsome fellow is Mocha. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. Scott has arrived very at the St. Nice Margaret's nice practice with Mocha. Yeah. The timid little rescue dog is getting a warm sure welcome people. from receptionist Liz and vet nurse Jess. He's gorgeous, isn't he? Looks a bit shy. Yeah, he's still trying to take in everything that's happened to him, I think. He's probably never been in a room with, you know, white walls and people that smile and mm. <laughs> things that we just take for granted, so... Mm. He's just going to be nervous about life, aren't you, for a while? But you're a lovely boy, aren't you? <laughs> Bobby's like, yeah, that's what I think of people that are in the meat trade. <laughs> yes, come on then. 
All right. Come on. Let's leave you up here, puppy. <laughs> Jess, you're with me. See you later. We don't know if Mocker's going to be fear aggressive. We've only seen him for today, so we have to gauge his behavior. Here we go. Auntie Jess has got you. Boy. Bad. Thank you. Okay, this is a very funny noise. We'll start it over here. Oh, he's a great lad. It's fine. Just taking it a bit more slow and being more patient with him because you can see in his eyes he's just not sure about us yet. Okay, so I'll just give you a little bit of this to make you feel a bit sleepy. Yeah? It's strange, isn't it, that we get so many dogs and puppies that come in that have been socialised and been around families and people mm. that aren't even half as well behaved as, yeah. as he is. Much more of a handful. Yeah, you're incredible, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, we've been working and existing alongside dogs for thousands of years, so there's something in that. There's almost a genetic memory for us to get on with dogs and for dogs to get on with us. And he's just tapping into that, forgetting what he's seen before and appreciating what he's got now. Mocker is now fully sedated, and Scott can proceed with the operation. It doesn't take a vet to see that there is only one testicle in that scrotum, and that is clearly incorrect. So what we need to work out is where's the best spot to go fishing? And we can work that out by just pushing this testicle upwards, and we can see when you push it upwards, you can see actually that is the testicle from his right. So therefore, the other testicle should be to his left. So that's my fishing spot right there. All done. Oh. Castration completed, our boy can wake up. Cool. Come on then, boy. Let's pop you back to bed. Oh, he's a good boy. Come on then. Come on. Good boy. Here we go. Let's pop you in here. Mocker will sleep okay. off his sedation before being returned to the charity All Dogs Matter, okay. and the oh, search can man. begin for his new family. Okay, all right. You sleep that off. Fishing's exhausting, isn't it? You got your Wanna boy be? back again. Oh, my baby. Yeah. No. Oh, your baby. My baby. <laughs> At the Richmond Clinic, Sarah and David have arrived with Gizmo. Practice manager Maz has a soft spot for the frisky feline. How's he doing? Is he all right? Yeah, he's, yeah, not he's, too got, bad. he's needs to have a quick checkup. Oh, so, poor Gizzy. Because yeah. he wants to hunt me all the time. <laughs> honest, honest. <laughs> I mean, you're not even that keen on David, are you? So no, 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 she hates me most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> I can't quite believe that. Humping? Man, I wish I was a fly on the wall when Scott examines Gizmo. I don't think he's had a gay cat before. That's <laughs> 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 oh, some familiar voices. Hello, guys. You're all right, right. Hello, gorgeous. Thank you. So, Hello. Then, um, they've brought Gizzy in to see you. Oh, my favourite ginger in the whole world. Have fun. Okay. <laughs> oh my God, you two are such trouble. Come on, mate, let's run, let's run. Here we go. Every time Gizmo comes into the vet practice, we have a bit of a bromance. We have a huge cuddle. He purrs away and I absolutely adore him. Hello, my boy. Oh, dear. I know. He doesn't oh, dear. like it. But today, he really doesn't seem particularly happy at all. Oh, dear. Got, got a right grumpy face on. He's normally a bit surly, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. we sort of put up with it and we love him. Yeah. But he seems a bit grumpier than normal. He is Do you grumpier think that's... than normal. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. He needs to be looked at. His hormones are running. Uh, right. <laughs> As in... His hormones are running. Well, he's neutered, so that seems uh, an impossibility. I don't think so. He's supposed to be I, muted. He's but... supposed to be, but his behaviour but... doesn't come across that way. Not with David, anyway. If I'm sitting in an armchair, he would try to do me on. If I lay on the city, here, try and do me leg. Yeah. Uh, come yeah. again? <laughs> Not amused that we're all laughing at him. Uh, no, I think that's probably why he's grumpy. Yeah. I'm quite sure it is. Does he just show that sort of attention to you to and me. not you, no, no, Sam? Not to me. Just me. Not just to me. me. Whatever. Just David. So, I don't know if you can supply pills or something. <laughs> I mean, that's daddy. That's just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Let's wind this back. What I want to do is just give him a, a physical exam. Yeah. All right, and just check him over. If I get you just to hold him around the shoulders, please, Sarah. I'm just going to sit down. Yeah. I think it's really important that Sarah and David have brought up this complaint with me. It is very strange behaviour, but sometimes when cats behave strangely, they're actually unwell. So I'm just going to have a little feel of his back. Okay. Wow. 
does seem a little bit tender about me extending his hips there. Good boy. You'd know that potions do suffer a bit from arthritis. Yeah, good boy. Now I'm just going to have a feel at his back in here just to see and make sure that he's definitely been neutered. Sorry, mate. Oh, dear. It's the indignity of it, isn't it, Gizmo? But he's definitely been neutered. I think it's highly unlikely that he would have come from a rescue centre without them neutering him. Yeah. But here's the thing. Maybe he was neutered as an adult. And what that means is unlike a normal young kitten that's neutered early, they don't know what it is to feel sexually active. Yeah. He, on the other hand, has had all the testosterone coursing around his veins and he's just been a red-blooded male and he wants to perform. Continue, yeah. It may well be that your boy is feeling sexually active, but you're what he fancies. And not you, Sarah, sadly. Yeah, oh well. There's two issues here with Gizmo. One is a behavioural issue that he is doing this inappropriate humping. The second is that he has a medical issue. He has some osteoarthritis in his lower back and his hips, and it's making him a little bit more grouchy than normal. So we're gonna do two things. Your job is to not respond to his sexual advances. And you're going to avoid any shaking, looking at him, talking to him, telling him off, none of that. You're gonna completely ignore him, but what you're going to do is squirrel away in between the cushions of the sofa that you sit on, a little spray bottle of water mm. and just give him one spray in the face. Cats hate being wet most of the time, but particularly sprayed in the face. So the reaction he'll have is of disgust and that should immediately calm down his libido. And Sarah, for you, I know that you will empathise with the fact that he's probably feeling a bit sore mm. and he has a bit of arthritis and I know that you suffer with the same condition. We're going to try a course of anti-inflammatories, okay? So you're going to be my nurse you're going to be my behaviourist and together I'm hoping we're going to have a happy and slightly less inappropriate ginger cat. Okay. <laughs> Sound good? That's yeah, brilliant, Scott. Yeah. All right, sounds good. I'm very pleased that there's nothing sinister, that it's just something that can be controlled. All right, yeah. and look, let's not judge. You know, he he's a lovely cat regardless <laughs> of who he loves. Okay. I'll just get myself a dog. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> A month later in North London, South Korean rescue dog Jack is relishing life with his new family right. and big brother Snoopy. And down. Get down. At the beginning, I was a little anxious. Obviously, I didn't know how his behaviour would be or how traumatised he would be. And he settled so well. I find it quite amazing how calm he's been, how comfortable he seems here. And it's lovely to see how happy Jack clearly is. Scott performed eye surgery on Jack shortly after the Beagle arrived from South Korea. And today he's making a home visit to see how well the little dog has recovered. Hi, Caroline, how are you? Scott, Good to nice see you. Nice to see you. Do you want to come yes, in and see the doggy? Yes, love to. Can't wait to see my boy. Oh, it looks like someone's having a rough life. Hello. Hello, my boy. How are you? Hi. It's looking like he's having a dreadful time. Not too miserable, I don't think. Mm -hmm. And first things first, let me have a look at your eyes. I mean, amazingly, you really just can't tell the difference between the surgical eye, which was that left eye, and the right. They look yeah. exactly the same. So a great result on that front. Lovely bright eye. The cherry eye is completely resolved. He's looking good. And how's he going with his buddy here? Really good. Better probably than, than I thought. At the beginning, I was a little anxious. I wasn't sure that Snoopy wanted a little brother, but it's been great. They spend a lot of time just cuddling up on the sofa together. At the beginning, he would fall off the sofa. I think his spatial awareness wasn't great, having been in a cage for so for so long. We're pretty his small back, confines and flats. I think so. so. And his back legs, um, the muscles were, were very wasted. There wasn't much muscle there, so he's getting stronger. If Jack is feeling playful, then Snoopy gets told he has to play, which I think is quite nice for the old guy. Oh, that's wonderful. Jack is just part of the family now. We wouldn't want to be without him. You're a lucky boy. Yeah, you're one of the lucky ones. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you sure? 
You gonna be a good boy from now on? Hey? Yeah. As for Grumpy Gizmo, the water spray and arthritis medications seem to be working. Do you not bother about doing naughty things now? He's no longer trying to hump David. All you want is a big old cuddle, don't you? Now yeah, that's it. Now you relax, isn't you? Much to the delight of relieved owner Sarah. Gizmo is one big cuddly, loving baby. And we love him. You're supposed to be a pedigree Persian pussycat. Look at you. Come on, let's dry you off. <laughs> <laughs> And there's good news for another one of the rescue dogs. Hey, Mocha, Mocha, Mocha. In South London, Mocha is also enjoying a brand new life. How are you doing? Mocha's new owner, Mina, is also originally from South Korea and feels strongly about the abuse of dogs in her home country. I always felt very bad about uh, my culture and people eating dog meat. I always mm -hmm. wanted to rescue dogs from dog meat farm, and that's why we adopted Mocha. Good boy, good boy. Mina's other rescue dog, Ellie, has been an ideal playmate for shy Mocha. Have I? Good girl. Ellie is very affectionate dog, so if we sit on the couch, Ellie will come and Mocha will just copy her and he'll come and ask for pets. So Ellie is just Mocha's model. <laughs> Sit. But Mocha is still painfully timid. Get that. And will need a lot more time to learn to socialize. Mocha was just too scared about everything. And if you put on the lead and he thinks like, oh, I'm going to do something on him, he would just sit on the floor and wouldn't move and just so scared. And so we tried to walk both of the dog together and then he was just completely okay on the lead. So we were so surprised. Wow, that's um, how he trusts dogs, but not humans. Mocker was deeply traumatized when Scott first saw him, so he's keen to check up on his progress. That's it. Hi there, Mina. Hi, Scott. How are you? Good, how are you? Very good. I like the way you're making happy little families yes. here. Yes, mm hmm They're both getting on so nicely. So who is this? This is Ellie. Hello, Ellie. Hello, gorgeous. How are you? And of and course, Mocha. Yeah, hi, Mocha. Hello, beautiful. Walking up to Mina, I get to see the beautiful Mocha looking like a completely transformed character. There he is on a lead in a park in the middle of London with a little canine companion and a loving new owner. It's wonderful. Can you say hi to me? Do you remember me? Do you remember me? Oh, thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> hey, sit. <gasps> Wow, so already got some basic <laughs> yeah. training down, Mina. Yeah, well done. you can ask for kisses too. <laughs> oh, I'd love to. Can I have kisses? Kisses? Oh. oh, thank you. Even if you have to buy it, it's still yeah. lovely. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, I think Mocha remembers Scott and it looks like he's happy to see Scott again and he gives like a bunch of kisses. <laughs> so yeah. still a bit nervous of people, mm -hmm. which is completely understandable. I yeah. mean, where he came from, he had no trust or faith in the people around mm -hmm. him. So it's a, a whole process of relearning that people actually are quite yeah. nice. One of the things that Mina's concerned about is that Mocha really doesn't like people, particularly men, which is not a surprise considering where he's come from. So she just needs to continue to socialize him well, go out and about, meet lots of lovely dog owners, and hopefully soon he'll realize that not all people are bad. Yeah. But he's completely trust me right now, so every time he's scared about other strangers who just come and sit right next to me and he just thinks that I can protect him. <laughs> oh, Mocha really couldn't be in a more perfect environment to be yeah. with a countrywoman, <laughs> with another dog that yeah. we know that he loves and mm -hmm. all he wants is love, affection and attention and it yeah. sounds like that's what he's going to get with you. It's been only one month but I see like huge improvement on Mocha. Kisses. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, good boy. 
Good boy. And thank you so much for taking care of him. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. thank you. Well, I'm just so glad that I've been able to play a, a part and now that he is uh, in a happy family. Mm -hmm. I have massive respect for Mina and absolutely everyone who's been involved with rescuing Mocha all the way through to him having a loving new home. All those people are really fighting a great fight to try and end the cruel trade, which is the dog meat trade. Let's hope that it's over very soon. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you so much. I love you too. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.